International Climate Education Team. So uh, for this, let me switch to English and let me welcome our guests. Um, so on my list here, I have Mary and Johnny, and I've already seen them in the room. So let me unmute you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Nice to hear you. <laughs> Can we also see you? Do you have a webcam yeah, ready? Or? Give us a second. And also the whole European team, because we are not here alone. There is Ula, there is Josh from TG Feature UK, there is Aidan, um, there is Wojtek, and there is Emilia. Hello to all of you. It's, it's great to see that you uh, come with a really great and, and big team to, to this uh, session. So, um, okay, without further ado, um, we can start your presentation. I uh, will be quiet for for the next uh, 50, 55 minutes or 50 minutes. And um, so if it's time to to go back to the questions from the audience or if there's anything uh, I miss with, uh, you know, the, the technique, um, so I will let you know. But um, the stage is yours, I would say. So who of you wants to present? Me. OK. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Give me one more second. Yeah, sure. Is it working or? Ah, that uh, one, yeah. Looks good. Perfect. Okay, Go ahead. it's working, I think. So we can start. So, good evening, one more time. My name is Mary Wuzowska. And I'm Johnny Dabrowski. We are coordinators of FFF Climate Education Team. And we would like to welcome you all on our lecture. About 80 FFF activists from more than 30 European countries make our team. But it wasn't like this in the beginning. Uh, we started as a two in summer of 2020. So we can turn back time a little more to March 2020 when the pandemic erupted in Europe uh, and the lockdown began and online learning with it. When we were stuck at home, we had a lot of reflections. There was one thing that seemed particularly outrageous to us, both students and climate activists. We thought if we are stuck at home because the world rea reacted too late, because our societies weren't prepared for a pandemic, uh, for it would be revolutionary. Every citizen, every politician, every entrepreneur was aware of how to react to pandemic in advance. So then we realized how revolutionary it would be when it comes to the biggest crisis humanity has ever faced, which is the climate crisis. And so imagine how much the pace of change would increase if everyone was aware of what is going to come and how to react to it. Um, then we wouldn't bother with the climate skepticism so much and we wouldn't feel ordered to change our societies and economies. We would more feel obliged to it personally. So we came up with a conclusion that what we need is climate education in schools. Before we reached out to activists to form an international team, we created our own survey to analyze climate science in the European schools. It was conducted on a relatively small group because it was filled by two FFF activists from each country, but it was enough for us to draw conclusions, to have an insight, to have a bigger picture of climate education standard in those countries. And what were the results? 
let me show you the results from the few of the most important questions from the poll we conducted. The first question concerned the approach of these people to climate education as a solution to fight the climate crisis. And as we can see, the vast majority, because 97%, agreed that it's a very important tool. And what's worth highlighting, no one chose the option. It's needed, but not important for now, which makes us very happy. On this bar chart, it's shown how people rated the quality of their climate education. What is very conspicuous is that the most of the respondents stated that their climate education standard is two in the scale of five. That's a really dramatic result. And what's even worse, no one chose that their education is high standardized. And finally, the question that gives us an insight about which climate-related issue respondents are fought at school. As this chart is showing, quite a lot learn about mechanisms of climate system, but in contrary to greenhouse gas mechanism or climate anxiety, for example, these options gathered extremely low results. So the conclusion of our survey was clear. We have to implement climate education to schools. So we didn't bother. Uh, we introduced our idea to Fridays for Future Poland, which we are part of. And we formed a group of Polish activists and we sent invitations to all European Fridays for Future with an aim to create an international team that will fight for implementing climate education to the European schools. We started in late December 2020. After two months of work, we came up with climate education demands, teamed up with Teach the Future UK, and released a teaser which reveals our April plan. And provide Climate change. Climate change. Well, climate change. 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 About climate change. Climate change is the biggest challenge humanity has ever faced. It's a threat to all of us that will greatly affect our future. How do we face the climate crisis? If we are not taught about it, who will prepare our generation for tackling a disaster we contributed so little to? We demand climate education for everyone, regardless of their ethnicity, age, sex, and social status, and provided at every level of education. We are an international climate education team, which is part of Fridays for Future. Our project unites activists from over 30 European countries. And we at Teach the Future UK, working to implement climate education across the United Kingdom. We teamed up on this project to demand reliable climate education from European governments. In April, we will send letters with our demands to the governments of Europe. We demand climate education on every subject. Carbon neutrality of schools proper training provided to teachers, tools to help cope with climate anxiety, and empowering students to take action. Accessible climate education for everyone. We're asking politicians to implement these ideas into the curricula of all schools. Climate crisis is the biggest issue, or the biggest crisis per se, that the humanity has ever faced. Um, and as such, it's, it's truly frightening that it is still being neglected, and a lot of people don't even know about it. Um, that is exactly the issue that we are striving to change by implementation of climate education. Um, we are planning on, on changing the approach and the, the conscious mindset that people have, because that's exactly what we need 
that we plan to come about the climate crisis. Um, we, as a, as a whole, as a society, need to change our mindset and the way we approach the issue. And there is no other way to do it um, other than by education. Um, next slide, please. This is exactly why we've come up with a short list of six demands that um, portray our vision of, of the climate education, how it should be implemented and how it should be in general. Um, it's sort of a basic guideline of the rules of how it should be and how we believe that it should be put into life and included in every curriculum available. Next slide, please. And so the first demand tackles the issue of availability. Obviously, for climate education to work, it needs to be available for everyone as much as possible. And so that means that it must be made available, regardless of the ethnicity, age, sex, social status, etc. Simply, every person there is must have the access to climate education, um, every youngster and every adult, or otherwise it simply won't work. Um, the second demand talks about how, how the intersectionality of the problem, that is the climate crisis, makes it easier to implement it into the already existing sciences. If you think about it, it's actually fairly easy to put the aspects of climate education into every every subject or every science there is. It's just a matter of wanting to do that. And so that's exactly what we wanted to highlight. We believe that's insanely important. And we want to show um, that the core values of climate education can and must be put into every possible crevice of the educational system there is. So our third demand talks about the importance of psychological help for students. It is essential that we recognize mental health issues such as climate anxiety as a direct effect of the climate crisis. These problems will negatively impact the students' lives and will even make them miss school. We need to work towards ensuring the students and also the teachers' mental well-being. Otherwise, we won't be able to function properly as a society. And our fourth demand is about the training that all the teachers should go through. Without well-trained teachers that are aware of the dangers of climate change, we cannot expect students to deal with it. And moreover, we should be taught how to actively contribute to society and also how to address the ongoing climate and biodiversity crisis. And this can only be achieved when teachers know how to integrate climate education into their own separate, separate subjects. They should also be provided with proper training and actively seek to broaden their knowledge of such a complex problem that is the climate crisis. Our fifth demand is about how educational institutions have the responsibility to develop a responsibility for nature as well as social justice in their students, as well as foster active citizenship. So we are facing an unprecedented time of ecological and social crisis, and it's vital for students to be engaged in these societal issues from as early on as possible and develop a deep respect and responsibility for nature and for a just society. As we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, widespread disregard for others has cost us thousands of, of lives and millions of euros. Schools play a significant role in shaping their students and therefore all of society's values and lifestyle choices. The introduction of climate education is crucial to ensure the societal change that is necessary to fight this climate emergency. Our sixth demand is about the sustainability of our educational institutions. So our educational institutions must follow the rules of sustainability and be innovators in this field. Therefore, all schools must be net zero by 2030 and all newly built schools must be emissions free. This is because if educational institutions are to teach the foundations in terms of knowledge and skills related to the ongoing climate and biodiversity crisis, then they should lead by example and be a driving force of innovation in the fight against it. By building educational facilities with sustainability in mind from the start, significant future costs can be avoided as, a society, as society is forced increasingly to adapt to the crisis. We have already published our demands, which are reachable on our social media. That is only the very first step. The second and much bigger step is Climate Education Week, which we are initiating alongside with Teach the Future OK on April 12, 16. During that week, 
we'll be sending out letters to the ministries of education as well as having a press release which will detail our actions. Next. Uh, so as I've already mentioned, we're going to be sending out letters to the ministries of education. We are specifically focusing on these institutions since they have the biggest power and the actual ability to change something in the educational systems all around Europe. We also hope that this could be the push for governments as well as European heads of states to actually see climate education and recognize the fact that students are that students need it and it needs to be made accessible for everyone. Uh, we also hope that climate education could become a topic for global or regional conferences as well as COP26. So we kindly invite you all to join our actions during that week. Next. Yeah. Um, and also very soon we're going to be releasing our petition that we are collaborating with Earth Day Network and Avaz so that more of the general public could see our cause and participate in it by signing the petition and supporting. So uh, I once again mentioned that all the updates about it will be in our social media. So, hello, I'm Josh. I'm with Teach the Future UK, which was one of the organisations that's already been mentioned that we're collaborating on this week of action together. Um, and Teach the Future, would you be able to go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so Teach the Future is a student led and student ran campaign, which campaigns to have mandatory climate education across the United Kingdom and it's present in all of the devolved nations of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and it's got over 90 volunteers from those nations. Um, would you be able to go next please? So yeah, our key thing is that we demand the reform of the climate education system because our learning needs to reflect the severity of the climate crisis and at the moment in the UK it does not and as highlighted it doesn't across Europe as well. So what does this actually mean? So our, in, our education system is inherently flawed because we do not receive adequate prepare, uh, preparation, training and information about this climate crisis that we'll be facing. And schools and education systems really need to reorientate this around the climate and ecological crisis to ensure that we're able to uh, be part of the solution rather than part of the problem and that we're able to fully understand and be equipped to aid governments and NGOs be part of that solution to tackle climate change. Next please. So these are our key asks. I'm afraid I'll end up just reading them off the screen to get them word for word, but they're there on the screen if you wanted to read them. Um, so the first one, which is present across all three nations that we currently have, England, Scotland and Wales, is a government commissioned review into how the whole of the English, Scottish and Welsh education, uh, formal education system, is preparing students for the climate and ecological emergency. Next slide, please. Also asked for the inclusion of climate emergency and ecological crisis in teacher training and a new professional teaching qualification so that we ensure that teachers are adequately prepared to train and teach students on these issues and feel comfortable having these conversations. Next, please. In England, uh, this is where it starts to differ slightly. In England, we've got an England Climate Emergency Act, which was actually the first act in the UK, the first bill that was written entirely by students. And that's something we're really proud of, that we've written a legal text that the government can, can implement as part of a, a law. Um, and in Scotland, there's a call for increased priority for sustainability in school, uh, inspections publicly influencing educational rankings. So that would be that schools environmental credentials have an impact on how they rank when they compare schools and in Wales a guarantee that all new and existing educational buildings are built and or retrofitted to be carbon neutral and enforce policies of sustainable practice across the education sector. Next please. And the last one, um, England doesn't have a fourth ask, it's stuck with three, but in Scotland there's the Scottish and climate, uh, Scottish 
Biodiversity Emergency Education Act, and in Wales there is the Welsh Climate Environmental Education Act. So there, that sums up the ask that Teach the Future have. And as you can see, they're very similar to to those that have already been highlighted. Next, please. So I'm just going to take you through some of the stuff that we've done as an organisation. Um, so Teach the Future UK was launched in England. Um, the, that was the first campaign that we had, and that was October 2019. We had a parliamentary reception at Westminster, which is where our government is based. Um, Teach the Future Scotland then launched on the 6th of July 2020. Um, so a bit later, but still within a fairly short time frame. And that kick started a week of digital action. That was how they launched. And Wales launched February 2021, so just uh, last month or the month before. Um, and that, again, had social media actions because we were in a national lockdown. And this is some more information about the parliamentary reception. Next, please. So this is a picture of inside that parliamentary reception. And we had over 70 parliamentarians attending the reception to launch the English campaign. And parliamentarians are the lawmakers, the politicians in the United Kingdom. So that was a really big deal that we had that many parliamentarians and uh, parliamentarians attending, and it was really exciting. Next, please. So we did a campaign for a green recovery uh, for education. So in England, we lobbied for investment in retrofitting of educational buildings as part of a green recovery plan. Um, we rallied around other organisations for this push as well. And as a result, the government launched a public sector decarbonisation scheme with over £1 billion of investment into energy efficiency in schools. So that's something we're really proud of and we're really excited to have seen a positive outcome. Next, please. So we, um, we've we launched a petition, an online action scheme on our website, teachthefuture.uk. And we've got letter writing on there so people can write to their individual representatives and we've got a petition and the result of that is that we've had over 21,000 signatures on our open letter to the government and we've had over 4,500 uh, letters written to people's representatives so that that's a huge number of people who have, who have written letters to their local representative to ask for climate education next please so we, one of the other things that we do is to have regular meetings with ministers, and this is particularly the case in Scotland. Um, they've been really great at getting these meetings. Uh, and some of the asks that we've got have been included in some of the parties' election manifestos. So when, if they get elected into power, that's a, a campaign pledge that they've made is that they will implement the asks that we've got. Next, please. So since starting, we've managed to build up a big network within the UK and further afield. And there's over 145 supporting organisations from across the UK alone who support us. I've got a, there's an image that will come up next and that has got some of the logos um, to show that it's a vast array. Next slide, please. So this is just a selection of them. But as you can see, there's a lot there um, and they cover all sorts of sectors. Next, please. So this is just some of the international work that Teach the Future has been doing. Next, please. Yeah, so one of the first things that we do is working with other campaigns. So we worked with a group in the Netherlands to object to the CAP. Um, we worked with Poland as you've, have you heard, to set up this international, to help set up the International Climate Education Network. Um, we had initial conversations with Latvia, um, various other countries. We've provided resources and support to Zambia, Canada and Congo. So there's all sorts of groups around the world that are setting up and it's really quite exciting. Uh, we're currently working on this idea, which is a global climate education network where groups can support each other, share ideas and, and just have that sense of community so people feel less isolated. Um, so it's not a campaign for international climate education, but it's a place where people can be friendly, share ideas and thoughts and feedback and just give that sense that we're not alone in asking for climate education. Quite often it feels like there's not very many people campaigning for it, um, but there's so many people who want it. So just getting people in a space where they can make it clear that there's other people and they're not alone. 
Next, please. We've also produced resources for campaigns, um, not necessarily just um, restricted to climate education campaigns, but that's what the focus is. Um, they're on our international website, teachthefuture.earth, and that's something that we've used to support some of the campaigns I mentioned, like Congo, Canada, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Next, please. So our sort of final message from Teach the Future is, next slide, please. The education reform is something that we shouldn't have to ask for. It's something that should be given to us as a right. It's now more than ever critical to begin discussions on this topic. And that's exactly what we are aiming to address. And we're so excited that we're working together on this week of action. Our cooperation is experts. So throughout our project uh, about climate education, we've been collaborating with experts in climate education and policy in, from, different, uh, from different organizations, including academia and non-governmental organizations, as well as governmental organizations. Uh, for example, we've worked with uh, experts from WAW University Poland, WWF Bulgaria, Avaz UK, the U.S. Partnership for Education for Sustainable Development, Earth Day, and the IPCC. Our expert advisors have provided us with valuable input and guided us through the process of establishing our demands and planning our campaign. So we reached out to our advisors um, via email as well as uh, we had some video calls with them and um, they were really, really valuable in giving their point of view, their input, so that we could have demands that would be convincing, appealing, and understandable, uh, and so that we would have a solid plan for our campaign. And at this point, if there's anyone in the audience who also has expertise in climate education, climate policy, or anything that could help us with our campaign, then we would like to extend an invitation for you to join us. If you would like, you're more than welcome. We would be very happy to work with you. So uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to have you on board. Okay, so here we would like to, to ask you and invite you to check out our social media accounts uh, where we post regular updates about our work and our team. And um, our presentation is now finished and we will move on to a Q&A part. So if you have any questions, we will be answering them right now. Thank you very much. That was really a great presentation. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Um, OK, so let me see if we have some questions coming from the YouTube page. Um, I have one question here. So um, you talked about a lot of contacts in different countries. Do you um, already have some contacts in Germany? In Germany, Do you have plans for Germany or even the support of the uh, Fridays for Future Germany? Uh, of people? So I could answer this question. So, uh, of course, the April action that Ola uh, described is also going to be in Germany. And with help of Fridays for Future Germany, we're just uh, starting to work on it. Um, but if you are asking about any scientists from Germany, uh, we haven't yet the pleasure to cooperate with them. Okay, so um, yeah, in, in this case, let me just say we had um, several presentations today, even um, from uh, our local government in Germany and even some from the school system in Germany. Um, hopefully some of them will still be part of the spatial chat. Um, so maybe there are some contacts there for you guys so that would be great if, if there would be some people who can approach you and, and offer offer your help because i think that's a really a great initiative that you have there um yeah let me check awesome. if there are some more questions okay um 
So another question here is, you've already talked about the, that you have the, the network that is sort of like expanding. Um, so in, in how many countries do you have uh, contacts or people actually working, uh, working on this by now? So as we said in the presentation, uh, our team is consisting of activists from 30 European countries. Maybe TG Future UK, uh, Josh, maybe would like to add something about your movement. Yeah, sure. Um, so Teach the Future has had contact with a number of countries in different continents. Um, so. I don't quite know the number, but there's a decent number from Africa and North America. Um, we've not had any contact with Asia yet. Um, this is still in the early stages of launching this sort of network for people to collab not really collaborate, but share ideas and resources and support and just build that network of um, sharing sharing ideas and uh, moral support. Um, so th there have been a, a decent number. Hopefully there'll be a website soon so people will be able to see um, where where those people are located. So if you if you're interested in that, um, the website there'll be a link to it on teachthefuture.earth. Okay, thanks. Great. Now yeah, hopefully you guys will be uh, like a global network soon. Um, so here is another question. I think that was also sort of answered in the presentation as well. But um, maybe you can explain a little bit a little bit better. How do you co coordinate across all the the countries? Can you maybe uh, explain a little bit more on that, how that works in uh, like on practice? Um, I, I can answer that. I, I'm not really sure if I understand the question correctly, but um, the, the biggest part of the whole cooperation is, is sending the letters. I mean, we have representatives for each country, and um, those representatives, the, their main goal for the moment is that we, they will be contacting their own governments so that each country that has a representative will be in touch with their own government, sending the letters and the demands, and if possible, meeting with the ministers. Um, but other than that, we have a, a workspace, an online workspace where we meet regularly. We have some meetings um, where we sort of exchange our expertise and knowledge and work together. Uh, thank you, I, I hope that's uh, clear that's now. So um, now we have uh, some praise for you guys from Juliana. She says, you were all great. Um, yeah, I can agree with that. You were all great. Um, so thank you so much. Um, if there are no further questions, um, I think it is now time to more or less close the session in here. Um, for you guys, again, um, please join the, the, space, uh, the spatial chat um, because I think there, there will be a lot of contacts um, for you who probably can, can help you and you can help them. Um, so that there would be a great, a great place to, to make some new friends and um, yeah, for the members for, for your initiative. Um, so let me close the session by saying, so everyone who's watching now, thank you for, for watching us. Thank you for all the great presentations that we had today. Um,